My guest today is Magnus Martinson. Magnus, how are you, sir? I'm very well, thank you. I'm uh, working from home, same as most other people who, in, who are in technology, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm actually outside of the castle in Stockholm. Yeah. Uh, oh, where the changing that. of the guards is taking place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're, just, they're just not moving at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, uh, this is from one of my many trips to Sweden. You're, mm -hmm. you're Swedish. I am. <laughs> and uh, I, I want to tell you that I, I really enjoyed um, last winter when you and I had dinner together, you and your family. And yes. uh, I, even though I didn't know at the time, that was going to be my last international trip. Wow. I have not oh, left the country since then. Yeah, well, same as me. Uh, it's so weird. In 2019, I traveled a very big lot. I was uh -huh. tra practically everywhere. And then in 2020, absolutely nothing. I haven't been anywhere in 2020. Uh, maybe 100 miles away from home. And I think yeah. I, I, I was counting. I, I went to... Uh, 2017 to 2019, I went to 15 different countries. You've probably yeah. been to a lot more, but it's 15 yeah, well, is a lot. Well, no, we, we, need to, we need to hang in there, I guess, for a little while longer or a year or whatever time it takes. Hang in there, and then this thing, this pandemic will pass. It'll fade. Yeah. Eventually. It's a matter of when. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway. in the meantime, we can talk this way. We can over talk teams, this way, which is, works. it works well. Yeah. Yeah. It's good enough. Uh, and I wanted to talk to you about uh, the cloud adoption framework. You were telling me a little bit about this, but can you tell me what that is? Yes, I can. Yes, I can indeed. So, yeah, I, for context, I work with an enterprise customer in in Denmark currently, and they have, you know, it's it's their um, um, society critical infrastructure kind of thing. So it's it's really important that everything that they build really works and. Uh, for a lot of the, you know, um, they have some things that they run in in what they call a secure a secure enclave, and that has to work even if there is a a, a freaking, you know, um, a atomic bomb dropping on on Denmark, right? It that still has to run, right? Mm. Um, but but regardless, right? So that's the worst works. case scenario. <laughs> they can't they can't put that on any cloud, of course, but that but that's a different story. So the stuff, but their their business is large. It's a large enterprise, so they have a lot of customer facing things, uh, portals and various things and different kinds of services and those they can put on a cloud um, so they're building a large uh, you know enterprise size large thing with with Azure right so that's that's the kind of context that I'm working with uh, daily and if you're doing that there's a lot of stuff you need to cover like there's a lot of ground you need to cover there are so many areas that are important and, and mission critical you can't be without them because you probably have some sort of you know, governance policies and, and uh, compliance levels that you need to live up to. So there's so many things that you got to remember to do and think about in an in a enterprise scale that, that something that size. Um, and that's when you could use something like the cloud adoption framework. Okay. Um, having that said, though, even if your, your business is, is significantly smaller than a massive enterprise, you can still get a lot of healthy ideas and help and guidance from uh, the, that kind of a framework because that really is, to me, what it is. It's it's a collected set of guidance that Microsoft has put a lot of effort into into curating right for us. So they've they've gathered in the evidence from all the customers around the world that are using the cloud in in, a, in large scale operations, and and then they're trying to. Uh, make that into something that we can use. And, and they're doing it, not only trying, they're doing it. They're doing a good job at it, in, in my opinion. You know, there, there are certain things that you might need to note about the cloud adoption framework. And I suppose that's a little bit what we're, what we're talking about now. We've been yeah. looking at the cloud adoption framework uh, with my customer, and we kind of use that for, uh, for reference and inspiration. So it's it's guidance for yes. deploying applications to the Azure public cloud. That's uh, right. Is it is it more of a um, a step by step instructional document, or is it more of a bunch of loosely coupled uh, well, guidance say, documents? Yes, yes, and no. Right. It it is it is certainly that there is a methodology there. There are certain phases that you go go through. There's a planning phase, and you know how do you get started and and then it, it also goes into quite quite a, a lot into other areas that are not super technology related, like 
how do you reorganize around uh, using the cloud? What what how does what is that? What are the implications for your reorganize business? Reorganize your application or reorganize your business? No, reorganize your 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 business, your teams, your 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 mindset. Honestly, oh, as well, right? There's, there's a lot of things that you need to think about, and um, that many of the the challenges when a let's say that you're you're in a business that hasn't been to to done anything done anything cloud haven't been into a cloud right. at all and now they're going to it right they're making that's, some that's sort a of lot board, of businesses right there, there. there's a boardroom decision somewhere right where some people are like yes we got to do this cloud thing because you know that's that's what we're supposed to be doing and that's then not, there's like that's not a good all, reason <laughs> i know i know i know i, I know i know i know and then there's like massive fallout in the in term inside of the organization from from uh, you know from a top top down decision like sure. that it needs Jobs to be anchored change, for example yeah 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 and so there's lots there's lots um, and there's that kind of guidance uh, and at least strategizing and planning for for how to approach those things right because there's there's going to be uh, training requirements and there's going to be all kinds of things now to to start using a cloud platform if you have never done it right but even if your company is well into Azure, right, you've done it for multiple years, right? Uh, still, the cloud adoption framework, I believe, could give you a lot of reference points and guidance. Like, oh, wow, we haven't thought about this aspect enough, right? There's more to be done there. Uh, there's lots of different uh, design areas, uh, critical sort of design areas in uh, in terms of what are some things that you need to think about when you are building something significantly large for for cloud there's so many so many things you need to check off like a long list of things that you need to remember to 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 also take a look at right okay and i'm looking at the it's uh, there's a document in docs.microsoft.com yeah i'll put a, i'll put a link in the notes mm -hmm. here and cool. uh, it's i mean it's not a document it's a lot of documents i just, a lot of documents. Get, I just say get started here which is probably where i would go first <laughs> but then after that um, I would be, I might be confused as to where to go next. I see tools, mm. I see uh, uh, yeah. what's new, I see a whole bunch of sections on strategy and planning. Like, what, what so, where, where would one get started on this? Right. So, if you, if you're looking at this from a technical, technical, uh, you know, if you're you and your friends uh, are using technology, uh -huh, technology and friends uh, are awesome. doing that, right? If you're if you're doing that, if you're into the tech aspect of this, there are a lot of design guidelines that you should drill into, um, and and actually that goes down under under something that Microsoft has given the name landing zones. And I, I just want to pause there for a second and talk about landing zones as Please. as a concept as such, because I I find it fascinating, right? Because so here's what Microsoft does, of course, they takes in a lot of 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 experiences from all around the world, right? And and takes all that information in, tries to you know, sift through it or wade through it, I guess, lots of information, right? And make sense of it and, and reformat it into something that they can push out in terms of guidance. How do we help people, right? Uh, how do we build on experience to help people? And, and interestingly, Maybe it turns into something which is chock full of information and good solid tips and tricks and everything, except that when it comes out, and, and, and there needs to be a little but in there, when it comes out, it's in a form which is, if, if you just take it by the letter and implement it A to Z, just as the text says, I think you might end up with something that doesn't really fit anyone. Um, so, so that's that's a bit of a challenge, right? You have to look at a big, you know, massive library of guidance like this, and 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 understand which pieces to pull out and get value from, and in which order. And that is, of course, a bit of a challenge. So, an an Azure landing zone is probably, um, as it is more or less described here in the in the cloud adoption framework. Probably not something that anyone needs, at least not initially, right? <laughs> Maybe later, but you need to start small. So there's actually some guidance in there about starting small. Uh, start small and expand, actually. There's a whole section of that. Like, so you have to be careful, right? Don't, don't think that this is the rules, right? You follow the rules because that will get you into trouble. It'll take a long time to implement and you'll probably not get what you need. So there's a lot of information that uh, may not be relevant to your specific business or your specific problem. Or that's right. Your, 
to suffer and being able and to that's, recognize that's where what it is. can become challenging, right? Because if your organization is not uh, experienced enough yet in terms of they don't have enough cloud experienced staff on hand. Yeah, or you don't then, know what you don't you, know. You, you still, because you don't exactly know which pieces to just glance over right now and which pieces to de dive into right now. Mm -hmm. And that can still put, even if you have all this information, you still got to make sense of it. And, and that's where we can have a bit of a challenge, honestly. Uh, how do you address that challenge? Like, How does you, your organization approach well, that? Um, not to sort of you know beat my own drum or anything, but I, honestly, I've I've been an Azure MVP for over ten years. You were one of the very first Azure MVPs. That's actually factually correct, right? So I was in one of the first batches of Azure MVPs, which means that I have a lot of experience on this, and and so I've done it. Mm -hmm. I, I also see where people you know may uh, need more help, right? And yeah. if they need more help, they should either employ people who are you know experienced enough or it's it's difficult because I'm a consultant. Just get someone, get someone yeah, in. Yeah, so that's a good to, way to, to find you, somebody. Find an expert that has experience. Find an expert for a while to to help you make sense of it and and make that plan together with someone who's done it before, right? Because just guidance, just text in its own. If you just have to read all that, that's thousands of of words, tens of thousands of words. I don't know how many pages, right? If just even if you are able to consume all that text, you still it's not the guarantee that you know how to make sense of it. Okay. <laughs> so, so it's it's good guidance. Uh, it's just a lot of it. <laughs> oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, so, what uh, what does your organization do when you when you first approach this? What's what was step one? Oh yeah. Well, same as everyone, um, we kind of wanted to get going with a sample project, and huh? I wasn't there from the very very first beginning. I had some holiday time coming and stuff, so I, I started here in this project in August, and they were already doing some things. So in a sense, uh, probably very common, we didn't get off on the exact right foot. Oh, you know? okay. Was that um, August of this year or August of last year? August August of this year, in fact. Oh, so okay. this, this project year, this project there. itself is 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 a new project. I've been yeah. working with the cloud adoption framework in a previous project as well. Yeah, it's probably worth so, pointing out. Today is September fourteenth. This, yeah. this this might not air for another month. So <laughs> yeah, right. So there there are a few there are a few um, things you need to to think about though though in terms of the, the sort of the baselines, right? You have to get your uh, your your base uh, sort of subscriptions and management groups. Now we're talking hard hard technical Azure stuff here. You got to get those sort of down a little bit and and lay something out that that seems logical right now. Maybe not build it in a way where you think that you built it right the first time and never going to change it. You're probably going to change it. And and then start looking into enablement, I'd say. What are the things that you need to do as an organization? You probably have many internal teams, right? You have many projects internally, lots of different teams that's going to start using Azure. How do you onboard? What, what do you need to do to onboard in a responsible manner because there's uh, onboard several, there are people several, onboard the people the onboarding teams and projects and people right okay. who how do you give access to Azure what way do you set that up because if you're an enterprise or even you know significantly large uh, I've seen a lot of scenarios where the developers on the teams have way too much access into the subscriptions because yeah. they didn't understand how to set up access, so they just gave everybody all access. That's easier to do, which much much dangerous. easier, right? Because it's so so easy. And then you know, uh, six months down that line, you got a hellhole of of things that just change magically because somebody decided to change something somewhere, and people have too much access, and you're not compliant at that point with anything. Because you can't give everybody access to everything, because that's not going to fly in any co any compliance and security audit ever, right? right? So, and then you got to go start backtracking that and unwinding it, right? So now you got to you know you got to backpedal now and remove access from people and have people become upset because they're yeah, all of a sudden it, it sounds things. like they're not not trustworthy anymore, right? Or, or maybe they're not uh, maybe they don't feel that attitude, but it's, now they can't do the job that they used to be able to do. Which is uh, so they have to figure out another way. Yeah. So so really start with how to get the proper access, okay. start thinking about that early. Uh, technically, how do we get into this? What do we need to do to onboard? Let's say we have a new team, right? Team Foo is coming in and they're going to build their new service in the in the cloud, right? How do they do that? What, what access do we need to set up for them? Uh, how do we enable them without 
giving them too much access because you also don't want to burden them with, uh, let's say, deployment credentials. That's just pulling something out of the air, right? right. Deployment credentials. How do you handle those? Right? How <clears throat> can everyone on the team deploy to production? Well, that's not compliant. Yeah. Sorry. Right. So now you got to think about that. So there's there's definitely plenty of things to think about. And that's what I view the cloud adoption framework as a, a, a large suite of guidance. Right. Where there are so many things in there. So start working through it. Start understanding what's this about. And then, of course, try to make a plan which, um, you know, begin, try to begin on a plan because you wouldn't know to begin with. Right. Start on a plan and, and adopt it as you go, change it as you go. But start getting into the basics first and uh, and expand from there that's that's a good idea i um i noticed there's a section here on tools what, what's in there oh i don't even know what's in there oh <laughs> uh, find cloud adoption tools and templates and there's a cloud well, journey tracker well, right. strategy, yeah so there's uh, there's a, there's a quite a bit there's a quite a bit in terms of templates and deployment sort of arm templates or terraform if you like that there's both in there um there, there's more kinds of um um, ways to, um, to 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 get going with sort of just a snapshot image of something. Uh, I think that's good and bad. If you, if you don't mind, um, I th I think it's good to get some help and understanding of of how can I really really deploy something and really start doing something. I think it's bad because. It has a lot in it, so there's too much to begin with. Really, when you when you start, you want to start really small uh, until you understand, and then start thinking about the larger things, as in how do I connect from the cloud to on-premise over a secured network, and you know all kinds of crazy things, right? Um, should I mean uh, there's a massive business decision involved in whether or not the company should acquire an express route, because that is a huge cost. Right. And, 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 and what's an express route? An express route is is a, 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 a dedicated physical connection from your offices, from your 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 physical offices to a cloud center. I see. And and you can get that. You can buy that. Um and, and it comes with a pretty hefty price. So it's right. it's it's important to know is that something we need, right? And how do we connect to on premise if we don't have it? You, you can you still connect? Of course you can, but now you're going over the internet. Is that okay? And right. you know all all those decisions are very very large, right? But you want to enable something first and get some experience. And in in a weird sense, you need to go and deploy something to Azure that is uh, important for you. It's got to be a real application. Got to be something that you take to production as soon as possible. So you start getting some real actual bills, right? Actual costs, you know, every month there's a cost and you can start correlating that cost to the, the business value and start understanding, right? Because if you're not, if you're just playing around, then you're just in a sandbox, right? Um, if you, you got to get something out there that actually is business worthy right. um, and, and start small. I do this idea of starting small really resonates with me, with me because I was a mm -hmm. consultant for a long time yeah, and uh, a lot of, customers wanted to do everything right away yeah uh, which is understandable but high risk and starting <laughs> small maybe maybe choosing something that isn't mission critical yeah is a good start as well because well, well, yes, first mission project, you'll probably make some mistakes and there's, there's probably levels inside of mission critical applications right with our customer they have some th some stuff that targets their market and that can never go down because it's going to get really expensive really fast and I then they have other, other that stuff one. that other stuff that maybe targets their business, their market, their 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 uh, um, you know public relations and other things, they're still mission critical. But if something were to fail in one of those, it's still it's still kind of okay. It might make headlines, but it's not going to be like the service was down and now you know the 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 country has lost a uh, hundred million. It's like that doesn't work, right? That wouldn't fly. <laughs> so. There's a difference, right? There's probably degrees in hell. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, how long has this framework been around? Oh, good uh, question. I don't. What did you first think. learn? I, of that? I don't. I don't rightly know. And what they keep adding learn? to it. That's actually a, that's actually a good observation, though. They keep adding to. It. There's a, at the very top of that list. There's a what's new section. So oh. even if you have been using that framework for a while, there's, you might need to go to the legend and see. Uh, actually, what does the legend say? Uh, does it actually say? I'm, I'm looking at what's new, and it was last updated August 25th, so uh, just about three weeks ago. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they keep putting new sections and new parts out there. And some of them are not already, you know, they're not evolved so far yet. You could see in some areas they've given it a lot of thought and put in a lot of work. And other areas are more like, not almost like highlights. You, you'll know that they'll, they'll spend time there next, right, <laughs> to add more. Oh, yeah. You know, what's interesting about uh, Microsoft documentation these days is it's open source. Yeah. And so I, I'm not sure if it's the case here, but in some cases, the contributors might not even be Microsoft employees. Yeah, it can be like document if, pe like documentation if, people and yeah. Yeah, if you and your developers on your team uh, mm -hmm. had found something that was either wrong or could be enhanced in some way, you could actually yeah. do a pull request and submit to yeah. this. Absolutely. And you can edit this page, it says. So yeah, this is probably um, most likely a public on GitHub or some something somewhere. Oh, I'm sure it is, we, now that we own GitHub. <laughs> <laughs> it, it actually is, yeah, I just clicked edit and it took me to GitHub. Yeah, there you go. And I, I have not that's actually. I think that's a strength. You can you can make a comment on anything here. You can make a, a little change and suggest a pull request. Um, I think it's pretty good. Uh, I enjoy that. Uh, sometimes I try to do it. And uh, I generally speaking, I'd say Microsoft are very uh, quick to review uh, those those kinds of input, mm. and then give you a you know a, a note to say if they if they like the change and stuff. Yeah, the documentation at Microsoft has become a, a lot better in the last five years. It's gone from Which something is good because it needed that. <laughs> was just okay to something that's I think a strength. Yeah. It, yeah, you're right. It needed. It was a weakness at one point. It was. Uh, um, and uh, very cool. Uh, what What else? Anything we haven't talked about that is important? Well, I mean, I, I'd say that the the whole plan, the whole prospect of moving something to the cloud and unless you haven't done it before it i'm sure it sounds daunting i hope that it sounds even more daunting after listening to something like this right that that you take you know care to to not um go off into the wrong direction too far uh, rather than try to make a plan it's maybe not always easy to make that plan but you know it's worth it to start in the right way with some good guidance with some good help from the right people okay and because it's going to make it easier um i've seen some organizations where they have gone a long way down the a certain road and you come in late and you start because now they're in trouble right now now they have issues not the the current customer i'm working with now thankfully but i've been in customer engagements you know scenarios before where they have, you know, they've spent a lot of time and they've started building their castle their specific way. And you come in and you look at it, it's like, huh, what foundation you got there, right? It, it just looks like there's something there and you start peeling away layers and start looking at it and it's like, oh, right. And you kind of like, you start feeling like you need to make that comment. Oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that wasn't exactly what you should have done. Uh, and at that's that point, why they need you. And at, at that point, right, you're you're deep down into something very dangerous, and and it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna waste time, it's gonna waste cost, and you're gonna wind up you're you're gonna be in a place where so many things are suboptimal for a while that the cost of that is going to far outweigh the cost of actually getting the right guidance to begin with. Um, that's that's sort of my I think my main tip. Uh, unless, oh yeah, you sound like an agile person when you talk about this. Don't get too far down the road before you start discovering your mistakes. Fail faster. Yeah, 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 yeah. pretty much. Uh, I, I'd say you need to be a little bit, a bit agile here, but but you need to, I guess, more moreover, right? Um, the, the, the cloud um, recruiters for cloud positions are screaming at everyone who has anything to do with cloud uh, right now, because there's a lot of uh, demand and there's not a lot of enough people, which is cool for, you know, People like myself, that's great, right. love it. It's not bad for my business, but uh, at the same time, right? Be careful uh, and, and uh, take advice before you go too far. Excellent, and, uh, and you mentioned you've been on MVP for what, 10 years it's been, wow. Yeah, 10 years and uh, yeah, that and a regional director as well. And you're an RD also, that's great. Yeah. And uh, you're, are you still speaking publicly and writing about this stuff during these that's crazy times? 
Well, mostly remote, right? I have a yes. I have a whole st- I have a whole stack of nice plaques here from from my conferences that I've been doing uh, remotely. So oh, remote nice. conferences, and then you get some lovely plaques to. Oh, I've that never, you, never spoken that spoke. to that one. I should now. I should apply. <laughs> so, I a, so I can have a plaque. <laughs> right. But so it's a lot of remote stuff. And um, that's fair and fine right now. I mean, we're we're privileged to be people that can still, cloud is, is, is exceptionally well suited to remote work because it's remote yes. by design. So it's, it's really nice to be able to do that, right? I know a lot of people that cannot work remotely that has to go out into the world at this time and they're either um, laid off or 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 have pretty big restrictions on what they're able to do but i can just stay home and work so i'm i'm one of the fortunate ones Uh, good job you have anything coming up uh that you're what that you'd like to share well, I wish I, I wish there was lots of more. Uh, the, the the biggest thing coming up now is is that I uh, my my wife and myself have a 15 year anniversary coming. Oh, congratulations! Uh, thanks. Yeah, well yeah, that's, that's awesome. I've, I've and met your like, wife, and she is way better looking than you are. I know, right? I know, right? <laughs> I can't figure it's amazing. it out. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, well, at least I, I managed to fool someone. <laughs> it must be your personality. <laughs> I don't even know. We'll have to ask her about that. <laughs> Thank you, thank you so much for spending your time with us. And Absolutely. you and your family, please stay safe, my friend. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thank you. Implementing a cloud technology environment for your friends and yourself can be a big challenge. You will need to get guidance from the Azure Cloud Adoption Framework. 